Hi, my name is Dion Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis for the week ahead starting the 23rd of September. Hope you all had a great trading week. And so uh, let's get into the week ahead when it comes to uh, the upcoming data. So in the United States, the key focus will be on PCE prices, personal income and spending reports, as well as speeches from several Federal Reserve officials, including Chair Jerome Powell. Investors will also be monitoring the final reading of Q2 GDP growth, S&P Global PMI data, uh, CB Consumer Confidence, Durable Goods Orders, and both new and pending home sales. Global PMI data for September will be released for Australia, Japan, Germany, the Euro area, and the United Kingdom. Interest rate decisions are expected from central banks in Australia and Switzerland, and key inflation data will uh, come from Australia. Germany will release its LFO business climate, GFK consumer confidence, and employment data, while Canada will report GDP growth for August. So uh, lots going on uh, this week. So uh, getting into uh, some technical analysis and I guess the past fundamentals um, and some future fundamentals that are going on potentially and starting off on the dollar index, a so dollar index um, and this is the equally weighted dollar index. Um, I'll put a link on the top right hand side um, so you can if you want to plot the uh, equally weighted dollar index on your charts as well as um, all the other currency uh, equally weighted indexes and why I use those rather than for example the uh, DXY or the USDX. Anyways, um, dollar this week, uh, lots going on but the price action uh, hasn't necessarily reflected it. So um, this week we did have the Federal Reserve um, came out and basically cut by 50 basis points. So Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell led his colleagues to an outsized interest rate cut designed to preserve the strength of the US economy as risks to the labor market mount, marking, marking an end to their single-minded focus on quashing inflation. So that's important. Um, the Federal Reserve have a dual mandate. So employment is one of their mandates as well as inflation. So inflation, they want to get inflation to their 2% target. Now, um, if the uh, uh, I guess employment or unemployment gets a bit too high or too low, then they will uh, um, hike or cut interest rates to uh, try to get uh, not only inflation but obviously employment um, to the level that they are seeking. So the Fed chief said launching the unwind of its historic tightening campaign with a big move while the US economy is still strong would help limit the chances of a downturn and that is quite important. They want to avoid a recession but he was careful not to commit the Fed to a similar pace going forward saying future moves would be based on how the economy performs in the months ahead. The half point rate cut which was larger than forecasters had generally anticipated is Powell's attempt at ensuring the soft landing he's uh, long had in his sights. So um, the Fed have really kind of kicked off their uh, cutting cycle with obviously a half point, but they are saying it's a bit more data dependent, which uh, is possibly the reason or one of the reasons why the uh, dollar hasn't sold off really across the board. But the market at the moment, if we go to the FedWatch tool, uh, we'll see or we can see that the market is actually pricing in quite aggressively uh, in November. So we've got November's rate cut. It's pretty much 100% chance of an ease now. and uh, But it depends on the size of the ease. So 25 basis points is priced in at 48%. But... Um, the uh, 50 basis points has pretty much risen from last week. So last week it was 27% chance, 27% uh, chance of a 50 basis point uh, cut, and now we've got 50-50. So it's pretty pretty much a coin flip uh, in November that the market are uh, 
thinking whether it's going to be 25 or 50. The more that this increases in terms of the probability increasing of a 50 basis point cut, I would expect really the dollar to start to sell off um, as the uh, the cuts uh, get more and more priced in. But also as well, if in fact uh, 25 basis point cuts are the um, uh, going to be likely, then you may see the dollar actually start to move to the upside. So let's see what happens with uh, the dollar overall. But I still have a, a sell bias on the dollar. So I do think that the dollar is uh, still uh, an overall sell for now. There are reasons to buy the dollar, of course. Um, we do have the election cycle and Donald Trump is seen as being uh, positive for the, uh, for the dollar. So I wouldn't actually be surprised if we did get a move to the upside. But ultimately, um, even if you get a move up to these uh, these highs, I would still look for a uh, still look for short trades overall as the uh, the Fed are on their um, cutting cycle. So moving on to the dollar yen and the uh, dollar yen is due pretty much a pullback. We hit that 140 about a week ago. And of course, you know, prices don't move down forever. So we've pulled back a bit. Um, I do um, expect the dollar yen to continue to the downside or at least enter into, you know, what would be known as uh, a range, an auction, right? A bit of sideways moving market before possibly moving to the downside again. So you would probably see, you may see prices just be contained within that between that uh lower high and lower low there right so um either way whether prices reverse around here whether they you know pull back to the 146s 147s um i i would rather look for a sell trade really you've got the um bank of japan who are looking to hold rates and the federal reserve who are looking to cut rates and so going to the um going to the Japanese channel let's find it right so Japan um yeah so basically we had this week Japan's key inflation gauge accelerated in August for a fourth consecutive month hours before the Bank of Japan is scheduled to wrap up its latest policy decision meeting so inflation is on the up meaning that the it increases the likelihood that the Bank of Japan will um, at least continue their uh, hiking cycle the only really central bank uh, that we're trading anyway that they're looking to hike and continue hiking uh, but uh, after the meeting, it says here, traders hoping for a hawkish tone from the Bank of Japan's uh, Kazuo Ueda at a press conference on Friday were left disappointed, undermining hopes of a yen rally. Probably just in the short term, um, he was slightly a bit dovish, um, but the data really is showing that uh, the you know inflation is rising um, GDP. Uh, recent GDP data was positive as well. So as long as that trend keeps going, then the uh, uh, UEDA, really the Bank of Japan, is likely to continue uh, hiking rates. The question is whether they do it this year or they do it next year. But again, probably a bit more data dependent. So, but for me, the you know regardless of whether they hold or hike this year, uh, with the uh, other central banks looking to uh, cut rates the yen should be a bit more supported so shorts for me in in, in is my direction the dollar swiss um, not really a pair i'm looking to trade but there could be some upside potential based on um uh this week's swiss franc announcement uh, the Swiss National Bank uh, are looking to announce a policy cut. And um, I think that they may cut by 50 basis points. Reason being is because the Swiss franc is quite expensive. And so they actually need a cheaper uh, Swiss franc in order to get inflation back to their 2% target. So we could see uh, a move to the upside this week when uh, the Swiss franc or if the Swiss uh, National Bank announce a 50 basis point cut so let's see what happens there but not really a pair i'm interested in um to be fair i'm not really looking to trade either of these um both central banks are you know in the midst of uh, cutting quite uh, aggressively so 
not really a pair that I'm interested in, but if you are, then you're looking for really maybe a bit more of a pullback before looking to go long um, this week. Uh, dollar CAD also as well, not really a pair I'm interested in. I think both um, currencies are a sell. So we did come up to this supply zone, did sell off a little bit. This was actually a bit of a stop hunt right there. So you had a level that had been touched several times, nice stop hunt, and then a move to the downside but the direction is a bit harder to read um, because again you have uh, both the Canadian dollar and the uh, uh, Bank of Canada and the Federal Reserve looking to cut rates uh, I'm actually short uh, I've got a short bias on both but if you are looking at uh, going short on this uh, currency pair because you believe that the Canadian dollar are in a better position than the US dollar then um, you're looking really just for a bit more of a pullback into that supply zone before going short. And if you are thinking that the dollar is going to be the buy, then you're looking for a pullback into that demand zone before going long. Uh, the pound dollar is a currency pair that I am interested in. And uh, I've been saying this, that the uh, I think the pound is going to you know continue to um, strengthen, especially this week, because we did get... Um, the uh, Bank of England come out and um, and say that they are likely the Bank of England uh, 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 Andrew Bailey was basically saying that and let me just get the quote um, I guess I'll open this he says um, the Bailey's comments about being careful not to cut too fast or buy too much was seen as, um, I read it as being uh, a bit hawkish. But let me uh, actually read the uh, the actual article. It says November rate cut now looks less likely. So rate cuts are being priced out of the market. So uh, the odds of a cut to UK interest rates in November have fallen following the cautious comments from Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey. The money markets now indicate that a November cut is only a 60% chance. So it was, I think, uh, something like a 100% chance. It says before noon, it was fully priced in, and that's quite a change. Why? Two factors, I think. Firstly, the fact the MPC, the Monetary Policy Committee, split 8 to 1 to leave interest rates on hold, while economists had expected a 7 to 2 split. So they expected economists um, you know, to, to be a bit more dovish uh, when it comes to uh, holding rates, but they were still actually quite hawkish, the majority wanted to hold rates. Um, so that was actually quite hawkish for the pound. And obviously, uh, Andrew Bailey's comments on um, on uh, holding interest rates for longer. So potentially, so that is the reason why you're getting prices move uh, to the upside, right? It's, um, it's what investors are doing. So and the reason why investors are buying the pounds. So um, I'm going to remove this uh, supply zone matter of fact i'll remove it from there the, we were at highs somewhere probably yeah around here um i'm not going to put in any supply zones because i don't really feel that the direction of travel should really be short so uh with the fed cutting rates aggressively this week the bank of england um not cutting rates at all and you have um future guidance where the bank of england are um you know, basically saying that they may, uh, uh, you know, be a bit more hawkish on on rates. They may, they may not, they might not come down as as much as the market is expecting. This is the reason why you're seeing prices move to the upside. And if you do want to learn a lot more about fundamentals and really in a lot more detail, um, just a quick reminder that the enrollment for the uh, Discord Mentoring Group, uh, private members um, enrolls, enrollment starts on the 30th of September. So um, I think it's going to be next week, Monday. Um, so, uh, if you do want to join, you've been waiting, then, um, you know, that's where, when I'm going to be opening and it'll be for a limited time as well. I'm not going to be open for, for very long, maybe about a week or so. Um, Oh, you'll get access to uh, the fundamental analysis spreadsheet as much as as long as um, with, with, with plenty of other things and the fundamental analysis spreadsheet um, you know is where I uh, go over every, pretty much every uh, week with the members my bias um, whether I'm long or short uh, not to be confused with me predicting that the markets are going to go lot you know up or down that particular week 
who knows but ultimately I'm looking for pullbacks always looking for pullbacks and um, and also as well you know the economic data that we look at to determine uh, whether currencies are currently um, you know strong or weak and also understanding things like the currency value cycle and many many other things and uh, also as well we have the members trading videos which I don't typically release to uh, YouTube sometimes I do uh, every now and then so if you've seen for example the recent weeks uh, you know US dollar masterclass uh, video that would be a members video that I did release on YouTube but there's many other videos that I don't and uh, analysis that uh, I give to the members so if there is if you do want to join uh, it's going to be on the uh, 30th of September is when um, the uh, discord group opens so moving back to um, the analysis so the pound for me is a continued buy just waiting for the uh, pullback really to demand zones uh, the pound, yen, um, again, not really a pair that I'm looking to trade. Um, you can see the pound is definitely uh, strengthened this week against the uh, the yen. I do feel, though, that this area, this supply zone here, is a really, really nice area to look for some short trades technically, but um, not really a pair that I'm interested in. Um, if you are looking at that area, then that's going to be a buy. Uh, and then you're looking for any sells up here. So buys for the pound, you have to wait for quite a deep pullback, to be fair. Um, or if you're looking for any kind of sells, looking that the uh, yen is going to be the buy over the British pound, then you're looking at a short trade to the downside. The euro dollar. So euro dollar. Uh, this week, there was actually a bit of a, um, a bit of stop hunting, liquidity hunting this week. I was talking about it to the traders that there was that was probably going to happen and it kind of did if you go down to like the lower time frame you can see it here there was a, obviously the 50 basis point announcement you know prices moved to the upside traders would have got caught going long right caught going long uh, based on price action and then all of a sudden you know their stop losses are all the way you know placed underneath these lows here took them all out right probably draw some drew some traders in to go short as well right and then basically took those out and then went to the upside right just taking out all the liquidity um uh for, for traders and i was saying to the traders in the group just to be mindful of you know this is going to be quite volatile and um i did actually didn't trade this i didn't think there was a need to prices were still in the high side uh and so really looking for just some more pullbacks right need a deeper pullback in order to get uh long um the euro this week though i do feel that the euro could start to potentially weaken the, the euro is not necessarily an all-out buy or an all-out sell um uh, where is it now so uh it says here the european central bank governing council member uh class uh not is said he's comfortable with investors bets on further interest rate cuts so they are still in their rate cutting cycle and it says here markets see one or two additional quarter point moves in 2024 with borrowing costs settling at two percent after six or more next year and the ecb lowered borrowing costs for the second time this year a week ago to 3.5 percent with policymakers signalling in the days after that another quick fire move in October is unlikely without a severe deterioration in the Eurozone's economy. So that's really an important um, uh, uh, piece of information to, to take into um, buying the Euro, right? So uh, at the moment, you've got the Federal Reserve who are potentially have got the potential to cut by 50 basis points at next uh, the next meeting in November. And then you've got possibly 25 basis points in December. Whereas the uh, ECB have got two more and they think that October is going to be a miss. So they might not cut in October. And then maybe in uh, November, they may cut by 25 basis points. And I think they got one in December 
you might have one in December, uh, a meeting. So it might be 25 basis points there, right? So one, potentially one or two more, right, rate cuts. So it looks like the, the Federal Reserve are cutting more, or the market is pricing in more rate cuts for the dollar uh, than they are for the euro. This is the reason why you're seeing this move, you know, to the upside. And so um, if that does continue to happen, then, of course, you should expect more upside um, over the medium to long term. Now, we have reached a high. If the um, there's data that comes out this week, and we, I think I'm talking about the PMIs coming out, which is a measure of uh, economic um, health. And if that doesn't come out, or if that convinces the market that the uh, the eurozone overall, you know, the many countries in the eurozone are maybe going into some sort of contraction, then we could actually see prices move to the downside. So um, I do think, though, that the overall moves should be more to the upside. But there is a uh, an opportunity to look for short trades if the euro um, comes out this week um, and the data doesn't support uh, economic growth and. Uh, supports more economic contraction so let's see what happens and uh, of course you know if it supports economic contraction then an October uh, rate cut is likely going to be more likely um, and so that has to get priced into the market and we could see a move to the downside but um, ultimately uh, I would say uh, with the Federal Reserve being a bit more aggressive than the uh, ECB on rate cuts, I would expect any pullbacks really to be more buying opportunities. Euro yen, um, I'm actually interested in this pair as well now. So um, we've got a bit more of a pullback after this, you know, quite aggressive move to the downside. And um, now waiting for really any kind of sell trades. So if it can pull back up into a zone, that should be decent for a uh, short trade. I do think that the again with the uh, the Japanese yen uh, more on their hiking cycle. I think the trigger for this um, move to the downside would be more to do with euro weakness than uh, yen strength at the moment. So again, if the data comes out uh, supporting the uh, euro uh, euro sells this week because of weak economic data then I do think that that is a, uh, quite a nice area to look for uh, some short trades. Uh, Euro pound, I would say to look for, again, pullbacks. Uh, I think the UK are in a much better position uh, in terms of monetary policy uh, than, than uh, the ECB. So if you are looking for a uh, a buy trade in terms of buying the pound over the euro really you're looking for a pullback into a zone so it'd have to be maybe this zone right here uh, any kind of pullbacks into that area there if you want to add as well um supply bit of, sorry support and resistance and level an area where prices have kind of reacted off that zone there i think that's going to be the uh the 84 50s 84 40s are going to be nice for a uh, a short trade that would be, you know, where I would, uh, why I think the path of these resistance is. The Aussie dollar, um, Aussie dollar, again, saying this, uh, uh, been saying this for the past few weeks, actually longer than that, but um, uh, recently saying that this area was a nice uh, potential buy, and it turned out to be because, again, you've got a central bank, the RBA, are looking to hold rates for longer, and the uh the uh, Federal Reserve are looking to cut and they've cut a bit more aggressively, right? So again, difference between two central banks, just seeing that basically play out, right? So basically a pullback into a decent zone, a 67 round number somewhere around there would be a decent area to look for uh, some buy trades. So let's see what happens uh, with that. Uh, gold, again, making new highs. So as it makes new highs, I've been saying this pretty much for a very long time, um, you know, that ultimately gold should be the buy and uh, it's worked out. You can see that the move to the downside uh, should be really the uh, the buy trade, any demand zones. Now, I'm not saying that prices are going to reverse here, could reverse here, right? And who knows? But ultimately, the 
the Federal Reserve are on their cutting cycle, so gold really should benefit from that gold and silver. Uh, and we have the S&P. Um, so again, with the aggressive rate cuts the uh, and a soft landing as well, soft landing basically being a metaphor for um, uh, the economy not necessarily going into any kind of deep recession or quick recession anytime soon. Um, it's benefiting the S&P. So um, we have made new all-time highs now. I do think that there's going to maybe be obviously some sort of pullback, but I think that maybe this might catch traders off offside. I think if we do get a bit more of a pullback, a deeper pullback into a cheaper area, I think that's going to be the, the area to look for um, uh, to establish a trade. Unless, of course, we make you know a, a much um, higher highs and then it will make this area look actually quite cheap. And then you can probably look for some sort of buy trade there. But right now, we've just really just popped up above the uh, the recent highs. So I'm not convinced that this is ever a buy. Buying at highs at the end of the day is something that I try to avoid. So um, I do think the better opportunity to look for a trade on the S&P would be a deeper pullback. It's always um, you know better to look for deeper pullbacks on, on pairs because you're buying for cheap, right? You're buying for a discount. So... Um, that's where we are with the S&P. And as long as um, the uh, the US economy is seen as avoiding a recession or a recession is a bit more into the future, I think uh, the uh, S&P should uh, grind uh, higher. And so uh, that's the end of the weekly analysis, getting into some trade updates from last week. So looking at last week, um, this is a bit of a trade update on the pound swiss and um this is an hourly chart and uh basically the entry you can see um you know this uh this analysis from last week and this is just like i said the update and um so basically took profit off at a one to one uh right around here so took about 50 percent off uh once it hit a one to one and then um i've reduced my position size in terms of trailed my stop uh, up to around here as prices have made higher highs so at the moment I think this trade should run a bit further especially uh, with the um, with the Swiss franc potentially um, in the Swiss National Bank looking to uh, uh, high rate, we'll say, we'll say high rates, uh, looking to cut rates aggressively. If they cut rates by 50 basis points, then uh, I think we, could, we should see prices move uh, further higher. So looking at that, again, from a from a daily perspective, I, I'm really kind of aiming more towards uh, these highs um, and maybe even higher, somewhere around that 80% of that overall range. So, yeah, good risk-reward trade on that one. And hopefully the fundamentals, um, you know, push it uh, a lot higher. And the Aussie Swiss as well. So, again, uh, shorting the Swiss franc against uh, what, you know, the currencies that I think are the two strongest, which is the uh, Aussie and the pound at the moment, as well as the yen. But um, haven't got into the yen uh, Swiss, not yet anyways. And so with the um, Aussie Swiss, uh, again, I'm in, I was in two positions and I took one position off at the, at these highs uh, this week. So banked some profits right here on this position, right? This uh, second position. And now I only have um, this one position right here. Uh, which is the market order and that one now I am looking to swing trade and hold uh, until potentially uh, these highs as well so somewhere around uh, the maybe the 60 round number and the catalyst for that again is really the Swiss National Bank uh, cutting rates by 50 basis points so I'm hoping that you know we can uh, get some um some more pips off of this but already this has been a really nice trade so far we're at what oh, i say we uh about two to one so hopefully with that 
we should see some more upside. Now, in terms of new trades uh, last week, I didn't take any. I was waiting for the New Zealand yen to set up. It did come into a nice zone. And I was saying to the guys in the group that um, I was waiting on Friday for that trade to set up. Um, but there was no entry. So uh, sometimes, some weeks you get you know plenty of trades. Over the past couple of weeks, um, I've had maybe about maybe about seven, eight, nine trades, uh, maybe even 10 trades. Um, but this week is one of the rare weeks where, um, although there have been, um, you know, some uh, prices have kind of pulled back, we just haven't had the uh, entries or the entries that I like to see. So um, profit taken on here, still up uh, on the Swiss and the uh, Aussie Swiss, um, Aussie Swiss and the Pound Swiss. So still a decent week. And um, yeah, that's it for this week. So again, just a quick reminder that the Trading 180 Mentoring Discord group opens on the 30th of September. And if you want to join, um, yeah, check it out. Go to trading180.com. I hope you will have a great trading week. Take care and speak to you all next week.